Alright folks, welcome back. I'm here to make a video on spreadsheets uh, for OpenOffice. Uh, a lot of people who use Microsoft would call this um, Microsoft Office 2007, 2003, 2010, or 2011, whichever one it is. But anyway, I'm a Linux person, so I use OpenOffice because it's free. But anyway, as you can see, I've got a uh, T83 calculator up on the screen and uh, I'm about to show you how to create a uh, data table in a spreadsheet and how you can use that data table to generate a graph and from that insert uh, trend lines. So basically I'm going to teach you how to title your graphs, label your x-axis, your y-axis, and what you're looking at. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, this has a lot of use uh, in, say, physics classes, math classes, stats classes, and things like that. So I'm going to uh, show you why these things are important. For example, uh, in, in a math class, you may have a TI-83 calculator, and they may ask you to uh, graph some things. They may ask you to graph things like 2x minus 1, and we can easily do that, and we can graph it. Uh, some people uh, can have difficulty with graphing when they're given a set of points and they're asked to, from those set of two points, find out an equation of of the, you know, of the line. Because if you notice, I was able to just generate that graph by typing in an equation into the calculator, into an 83, an 83 plus exactly. But anyway, uh, I can also look at this data table, second, and I see my data table. Well, the only bad thing about the 83 is you cannot just type into the data table and easily get it. Yes, you can go in through and enter in, just like in other calculators, uh, into the L1 and the L2s and, and generate a linear regression that way, but sometimes I think it's just easier to use a spreadsheet for this, and I'll show you both ways. But I'll show you the main advantage of OpenOffice or things like Microsoft Office to do this. Okay, so there's one equation, and that's a simple example, and I'll just move the calculator out of the way for now and everything. All right, uh, let's say that we need to uh, label our columns, and let's say that uh, we're going to label this column X, and we're going to label this column Y. Now, I, it really doesn't bother me if these are, things are centered or not, but if you absolutely have to have them centered and everything, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm deleting that, but anyway... Um, it really doesn't matter, but anyway, uh, let's let's say that I've got my X and Y data table here, and now it comes time to plot my uh, two points or a large set of points that I've collected through uh, uh, basically data collection, okay, through an experiment or whatnot. But I need to generate some points. Well, let's say I've got two points. I've got one, one, one and the point uh, 3 comma 5. So I've got 1 comma 1 and 3 comma 5. And from this I want to easily just generate a graph. Well, let me show you how to do that in OpenOffice. Well, we've got our we've got our table, our x and y. But what I like to do also is try to uh, name what these things are. Now, since I'm just doing a graph, these things that I'm plotting are called points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the word points here. Okay, so there's the word points. If you want to say this is the x value, say it's x value. If this is y, you can say y value, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. Now watch what I do. I'm going to highlight the x and y columns that I have here in cells A and B. Okay, so I'm holding down the shift key. I'm using the arrow key to do that. Okay, now I've highlighted the data that I want to pay attention to and I'm going to click on this. It looks like a really mad Pac-Man uh, with something green in its mouth, but it's actually a pie chart, and I think it's like a percent sign or something. I, I can't see it. It's pretty small. you know. But anyway, it looks like a mad Pac-Man to me. But anyway, when you put your mouse over, it says chart. So let's click on chart, and it pulls this up. Well, I honestly never use the columns, the bars, the pie, the area. But one thing that I do use a lot, I honestly don't use the one that says line that much, but I use the XY scatter all the time. And on uh, Office 2007, 2003, I think they may call it uh, XY scatter plot. But anyway, this is an XY scatter. So we're going to choose that. 
and automatically it's going to plot your points. Now you see this? You see the points? That's awesome. So all we have to do now is once we realize this is what we want, these two points here, we're just we're just going to click next. And then it's asking you, hey buddy, is this the range for your data? In other words, they're saying, is this correct, what you've got highlighted? And if it's not, you can simply just change one of the letters to get it back over to the uh, the column it needs to be in. But yes, everything that we need is there. So I'm going to click next. Now, this is one of the reasons why I put uh, in column C the word points. I've got points plotted on, on my graph as you can see here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this because you notice how this says Y right here and they've got Y. Well we know that these are our points so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that and call this points. Now I cannot type in the name points here but I can do this. I can change that B to a C and what that's going to do is it's going to put the word points there. The reason why it's putting the word points there is if you remember I type the word points in into column C, the C1 field right here and that's why it's popping up there for points. Pretty cool huh? Alright, next all I have to do is click next and I get to name everything that's in my chart. Uh, remember a chart needs a title so I'm going to call this uh, my my graph. Okay, The subtitle is uh, the creator so I'm going to put down a you know created by and we'll uh, use my initials JHC. Uh, the x-axis um, I can call this um, uh, uh, the x-axis and on the y I can call it the uh, y axis. I know that you may think that this is understood but say you're in a physics class it could be distance or displacement it could be uh, for the uh, you know it could be time usually it's always time uh, it could be seconds or minutes or hours and your y axis could be say distance or displacement time uh, velocity, it could be anything. Or it could be, say, height. Maybe you're, you maybe you were talking about height and stuff. But anyway, this is how you uh, label your your chart. Okay, And once you've done this, you're actually done. Now, if you actually need the grids for the x-axis, I never use them, but you can actually click here and it will give you your grids, just like graph paper would. Anyway, so I'll move them out of the way. Okay. All right, now there is my graph, and everything's hunky dory, right? Not exactly. If you really look, notice that uh, I did not. I was unfortunate. I need to drag this out of the way a little bit so we can see the rest of my stuff. Uh, I was unfortunate to not get a line created. Now let me show you how you can create a line in this graph. Let me stretch my graph a little bit larger so we can all see it. All right, there. Notice I was unfortunate to get a uh, name. Uh, well, I've got my name up here. Well, I, I was unable to generate an equation of this, of these two points. Well, that's not too bad. It, it's pretty easy. All I have to do is make sure that I'm somewhere in the chart and just click somewhere in here. Okay, you see what I'm just clicking. Just don't click on the points because it'll bring up something that you don't want up. All right, so I'm clicking in there. I'm ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Insert and I'm going to go to the word trend lines. So I'm going to choose trend lines. Now I know that I have two points. I know I'm looking for a line so I'm going to choose linear. Okay. Now after you choose linear I'm also going to choose show equation and it's going to automatically show me the linear regression formula for these two points. Then I'm going to click OK. And boom! I got a beautiful 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 line through these two points and look at what I have here I have this beautiful equation that has my slope and it even shows my y-intercept value and that is awesome now check this out if you don't believe it you can use the TI-83 to graph that equation see the 2x minus 1 wow how ironic was that? I can actually go in and look at the table values and see if I see my point 1, 1, which is right there, and my point 3, 5. 
Look at that. Now that is really, really neat. Okay. But anyway, uh, if you need anything else other than this, let's say you're like, oh crap, I need, I, I need that other thing that was up there on the trend, on the trends. Well, you can go back to insert. Oh, make sure you're in there. Okay. So I'm back in the graph. So I clicked in here somewhere. I want to go back to insert. Go back to trend lines. And if you want to show the coefficient of determination, which is the R squared value, you can click on that and click OK, and it will post it right below it. So it it does a lot of things, you know. Just make sure you've got everything labeled. Now I didn't label any. Uh, uh, I didn't put measurements on here like centimeters or inches because I really didn't have any. All I was doing was just showing you how to use uh, the program and everything. And I have learned this: if you're in college and they're telling you you have to use Microsoft Office 2007, 2010, and they want you to. Uh, you know, not use the open office. You can still get by with using the open office because of its compatibility. But one thing I did notice is uh, you could not just right click on this and say copy and paste it into the document because. Yeah, in college, um, when you're using this open office, uh, you just cannot just simply, like I said, uh, click copy and paste this into the Word document. What you will have to do is you'll actually have to do a print screen, and that's a, a button on your uh, keyboard. You press it and save it as a bitmap or a JPEG file to actually post it into a uh, Word document. So I thought I'd at least tell you that. Now let's talk about the TI-83. Okay, uh, one more thing. Let me show you how uh, the TI-83 can actually uh, do what this spreadsheet just did. All you have to do is go to stat, uh, go to edit, and type in uh, the points that you have here, 1135. 1135, notice how I've typed them in. Uh, if, you, if there are something in here, you need to clear them out. Press clear and then down. Uh, highlight L2 again, press clear, then go down. But one thing I've learned <laughs> from a uh, mistake is not to uh, actually go in there and press delete on L1 and L2. If it deletes it, then it's kind of a pain because you actually have to uh, rename it up at the top. But anyway, there's 1, 1, and 3, and 5. So let me give it a 5 over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the TI-83 to actually do my real integration for me. You can do it, but you got to put it into L1 and L2. If there are anything else, you need to specify to the program what it is. Anyway, we're going to go back to Stat. We're going to go to Calculate. We're going to choose Linear Regression, which is the fourth option here. And notice it's in Y equals MX plus B form, which here they have it as AX plus B. But anyway, we want to, we're going to press Enter. And just out of habit, I'm used to hitting second L1, comma, second L2 then close my parentheses and hit enter and it will create the equation for me here if you look 2x minus 1 which is the same thing that I have here 2x minus 1 and you can actually use the tally 3 to graph this linear regression model for you all you have to do is go into y uh, equals and you can actually just insert it as a variable uh, go to vars and then uh, scroll down to statistics well move down towards statistics press enter, uh, move over to equation, notice you see REGEQ, that means regression equation, you press enter, it will automatically insert it for you, and now you can hit graph, and you get the same line that we did here. And this is handy to have because that way you don't have to always go to a computer, use a spreadsheet, and generate a regression, uh, a linear regression model, and the TI-83 can do it instantly. But here's the way OpenOffice can do it, and here's the way the TI-83 can do it. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, watch it over again. And um, Anyway, well, y'all try to have a good day. All right, bye.